world-renowned Dr. Patrick Treacy. Please introduce yourself, sir. To an extent. Um, I originally had intended doing plastic surgery, but ended up a little later through med school, mainly because of the war in Northern Ireland. And as a consequence, when I'd worked in California and when I'd worked in Australia, spent some time cardiac thoracic in Africa as well, came back to Ireland, didn't really know what to do. I had trained as a general practitioner, but I really knew I'd never really do general practice, but it was a ticket, a license, you were trained in something if you want to work around the world. Mm. I had a lot of ER experience. I'd worked in four different hospitals on three, two different continents. Mm. And I had a lot of dermatology because I really liked dermatology from the point of view that I um, had worked in the Mayo Clinic and written a sentinel paper on cutaneous malignant melanoma back in 1987, you know, okay. and seen wow. some of the really severe cases there. So I always wanted, I'd always an interest in dermatology and plastic surgery. And I suppose the possibility of aesthetic medicine came up in 1998 with the advocation, I suppose, of Botox, IPL, and derma fillers all arriving at the one time. Mm. So I suppose when I originally set up my first cosmetic dermatology practice, there was very few people doing it, if anybody. And even though they say the United States was ahead of us, it wasn't really. They were doing a bit of Botox, but certainly they were doing collagen, but they weren't doing any hyaluronic acid fillers. So an awful lot of my original patients were from the United States, you know, particularly because we had, I suppose, hyaluronic acid before the FDA had a lot in the United States. I suppose I had a bit of an engineering background as well from the point of view that we had a garage at home when I was growing up. I could tinker at lasers and I knew how it worked and I never had to call out a, a person to fix them. So I put the whole lot together and it was only about 2001, I suppose the British College under Patrick Bowler, um, Rita Rackhouse, John Curran started you know, doing the same things and IMCAS um, started doing, but I was doing both of your sweating back in 1997, you know? Wow, okay. I was using Botox from migraine Believe it or not, in 2001, I was giving lectures on it, even though it wasn't accepted back until 2010. And many other things. I, I was doing aesthetics on HIV lepidistrophy patients back in the year 2000, you know, originally with sculpture and then with, um, and we were the people who, I suppose, pursued the original cheek augmentation. You know what I mean? Because nobody else was doing that at the time because there's no reason to do it. I mean, until the technique became, I suppose, favorable. And we were very lucky from the point of view that, live or not camp, we use the same injection points as we do today, even though you know, we had to work them out for ourselves to miss, obviously, the infraorbital nerve and artery, to miss the transverse facial artery. Lucky enough, I suppose I've been involved in research all the way along and came up with some of the original protocols for reversal of vascular um, occlusion. When Michael Jackson, I suppose, ran into problems back 15 years ago with having too much fillers in his face, he was sent across to me to take it out um, then, okay, and he would have wow. been one of the first people with highly run is used on. And Arnie Klein, who is dead now, um, had never used it at all. And um, anyway, I was lucky enough, I suppose, at the end of what has been an interesting career, or reaching the end that I was given recently in Las Vegas, top aesthetic physician in the world, which was a nice recognition from our peers. And I suppose wow. also I've been fortunate enough that I've now got awards from Mexico, China, Azerbaijan, Russia, London, Miami, Vegas, and lots of other places, and Mexico, of course, got a medal wow. out there. Um, Huge congratulations so, on your latest accolade. Um, huh? And I hear that you've been writing a couple of books during this lockdown period. I did, um, absolutely. I'd always an interest in writing um, medical history. And originally, back in 20 years ago, I won awards for the Irish Medical Times for writing on medical history. So I had some old um, stuff on a computer. And normally, I get away and work in the third world during the Christmas, the only time I do. And this year, I didn't. And um, I got one of my old computers and managed to upgrade it and get some the bulk of one of the books off it. And what I did was take different acronyms in medicine. If you had something like Trichet Collins syndrome, or if you had something like um, Collins fracture, instead of writing about the the condition, I wrote about the doctor who was involved. Now these doctors were Jewish doctors who, unfortunately, were got into a lot of trouble. The Nazi Party originally took over Austria, particularly the the, the 
genius of the goddess of medicine left from Dublin in the 1700s. It stayed in London just for a short time and then it went to Edinburgh. And it went from Edinburgh, I suppose, in the 1800s where all the big, I suppose, people in medicine was. And then it came back to London for a period under, um, and most of the doctors were in Thomas's and in Guy's. And it sat there for maybe about 80 years, but then it wandered again and it went to Vienna and remained in Vienna for quite a period of time. It went up to Berlin, um, obviously all Cox postulates, Virchow, all those guys were Berlin. And mm -hmm. then when the war started, it fled to originally New York and now has resided in California with all the biogenetic engineering. So it's interesting watching the path of um, the people who processed against disease and nobody really tells their stories. And some of the stories are really interesting. And I put the doctors <coughs> in the context of the period that they were living in. <coughs> Excuse my okay. COVID cough there, Cam. But yeah. um, the, thankfully we were uh, social distancing with the, uh, the Irish channel there. Yeah, there you go. Because I'd written a big part of this book originally many years ago, in the meantime, 32 doctors have died when I went wow. to update it. There was a lot of contention for Nobel Prizes, present lockdown. I put it together, sent it off. The, the publishers, thankfully, accepted it immediately and they liked the style. So Brilliant. then I was lost the other day. So I decided to do the living history of aesthetic medicine, which is yeah. um, really nice from the point of view that a lot of people in my living memory that I sort of worked with, you know, Yves Ilieu, for instance, it was with him in Paris originally even when he got sick. Um, Pierre Fournier, you know, the people who invented liposuction, who invented a lot of the original German fillers. Mm -hmm. um, even Jean Carruthers, you know, Dr. Rasman with FUE and hair transplants. So I've written about all these people and their contributions to aesthetic medicine. And that's a good volume. It's 200 pages or more with, you know, sort of almost 400 references. Wow, brilliant. I think that'll be a very, very interesting uh, read and um, just shows how much knowledge you do have. Um, we're going to... Uh, sidetrack into something a little bit more mundane and get my 20 questions um off the ground with you if that's all right 